Well, hello everyone, and well, hello. Hey, not hit. Hello, over here, over here. Hey, hey, there you are. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Hey, how fast do you think that train's going? Huh? Any idea? Yeah, that one. How fast do you think it's moving on your layout? Any idea? No? Would you like to figure it out? Sounds like a good project to you, huh? Yeah? Good? All right, that's what we're going to do on this month's video journal. Yay! Sometimes our train's are moving too fast. And sometimes too slow. We can figure this out. You know, you know, these things are available online. You can buy speedometers for your layout. Let's check it out. Ooh, some of those prices. Well, hmm, I wonder. Think we can make one? Can I make one? Let's check that out too. Maybe we can find some videos. Try this one. Hmm. I think we're on our own here. What do you think? Hmm. Yep. Okay. Here we have my solution to a speedometer for a model railroad. And I'll try to go through the setup here for you very carefully, considering what the components are. It's not a real difficult setup. It's pretty simple. I'm using an Arduino Nano board. And there's uh, uh, it's about four connections into the board. Actually make that six. Six connections into the board. I'm using a, uh, a uh, four by 16 uh, liquid crystal display. I've got two uh, of these little infrared sensors on here. I have two LEDs and I have two, I think they are 220 um, resistors and a few connections. So I'll try to go over these very carefully and show you what the connections are. First off, the LCD display that I have has a converter on the back. This little converter module makes it much easier to connect, um, make all connections to the LCD display. Otherwise, without this, it's a lot of connections. This cuts it down to four, four connections. You can see I've got four uh, jumper wires plugged into the back here. And we'll go over those connections for you. If you look closely, we've got the ground is at the top here, the ground. VCC, which would be the power. Then you've got the SDA and the SCL leads here. And be very careful when you plug this thing in because I managed to burn one out. Make sure before you turn on the power that you've got the ground and the VCC connected correctly. Otherwise, if you get them reversed, you're likely to burn out your monitor, your little LCD. So be very careful when you connect these. Make sure that they are connected correctly or you're going to be buying another LCD display like I did. So very important. Make sure you've got the ground going into the ground on your circuit and the VCC going into the positive or the 5 volt connection on the Arduino. So be very clear here the green wire is my ground and the VCC is my yellow wire and I have those going into my board here. Make sure they're on there nice and tight. 
The ground again is the green wire and that is on my negative rail here and the yellow is on the positive rail. So make sure you've got those connections correct on your circuit before you apply power. The other two, the orange cable is coming off the SDA of the video display and that, sorry my thumbs are in the way, the orange cable is going to analog A4 on the Arduino on the nano board and the red cable which is the SCL is going into analog 5 on the nano Arduino nano. And here's a little reference to the uh, Arduino Nano pinout diagram. You notice the highlight on the left side there, highlighting the uh, A4 with SDA and A5 with SCL outputs. The other connections I have coming off the Arduino board are, of course, going to use the ground here if you can see that ground is going on to my negative rail of the of the uh, breadboard here and the 5 volt is going to the positive so ground to ground and 5 volt to the positive that's supplying power to the liquid crystal and it also supplies power to the uh, infrared sensors we've got out here now each of these uh, infrared sensors have a few pins on there and I'll show those to you if you haven't used these little things again we've got if I can get close enough here uh, maybe not we got uh, DCC which is input for positive power and the ground is in the middle and the output is on the left so again make sure you get these connected correctly positive negative and output Otherwise, again, you can burn these out pretty easy. So make sure you've got those connections correct. So here I've got positive going to positive or the VCC. The ground is going to the ground and my output, a little hard to see here, output is this white wire. One of them I've got going over to analog zero, A zero. The other one, I got a little jumper here because my jumper was too short, but pretend this is one wire. The orange wire here is going over to analog pin A1. So my sensors are connected to A0 and A1 on the Arduino board. And the other connections I have are for the LEDs on the board here. I've got two 220 ohm resistors and they are connected to the negative or the ground to the negative of the LED. This is the positive of the LED. Here again, negative on the left, positive on the right. And the green wire is going over to digital pin three and the little white wire is going into digital pin two. So basically these LEDs are hooked up one to digital pin two and one to digital pin three. Uh, you could do this project without the LEDs, but I've decided they're pretty useful and I'll demonstrate that to you uh, once we get some power plugged in. So pretty simple setup here. And we'll show you how the thing works. Okay, applied some power to my uh, little board here. And I'll try to back off, I hope you can read that uh, LED, or rather LCD display. Now this is uh, designed to work where the sensors are 100 scale feet apart. So they're not quite 100 scale feet apart on my little board here, but it's good enough for testing and demonstration. So the idea is as the train passes over one of these sensors, we'll trigger one. You see the LED lights up on one sensor and it hits this sensor and the other LED lights up. And now they both lit up and we get a scale speed on your 11 miles per hour or 17.7 kilometers per hour. 
Now this can work in either direction. Try to move this up a little bit. And again, we'll trigger the sensors, the LED lights up on one, and there we go. We get 19 miles per hour. That's what the uh, LEDs are for here, to tell me that the sensor is tripped. As soon as I trip one of the sensors, the LED lights, and it doesn't matter how many times I trigger this one again. It's already been triggered once. That's all it takes to uh, light up the LED, and then we'll hit the other one. Okay, notice as when I trip one of these, you see the counter ticking away. I don't know if you can see that counter moving, but that's counting milliseconds. And we trip the other one, and the counting stops. We calculate the speed and show a ready light, and the LEDs are turned off. So that's how the thing works. It waits to see, uh, there are two variables in there. It'll trip one and trip two, and once both of those has been tripped, it'll stop and calculate the speed and delay for about five seconds and then reset and it's ready to go again. So this works in either direction. 35 miles per hour. We wait a few seconds here and it's ready to go again. The LEDs are turned off. Try again. And the LEDs turn off, it resets. Also, um, if I trip one of these and it spins for more than 20 seconds, it decides it must be a false reading and it will reset after 20 seconds. Timed out and it's ready to go again. So again, this works either direction, 148 miles per hour, that's going a little fast. It'll reset, we go the other direction and we get 119 direct miles per hour. So this is how the little thing is set up to work. And again, keep in mind, this is designed where these would be 100 scale feet apart. And that would be in N scale, uh, since three quarters of an inch equals 10 feet. Uh, N scale, they would be seven and a half inches apart. So pretend these are seven and a half inches apart for N scale. And So it works pretty slick, I like it. So then the, uh, the next uh, challenge is to get this onto the layout somehow. All right, well, here's a look at the code. I'm gonna start with a little comment section up here. This model railroad speedometer sketch by me. Ooh, speedometer sketch is based on the sensors being placed at 100 scale feet apart. So remember that as we go through this. The figure 6818 is a conversion from miles per hour to feet per second. So we take 3600 seconds divided by 5280 feet and we get a figure of 0.6818 miles per hour. Now that's equal to one foot per second is equal to 0.6818 miles per hour. Keep that in mind later here. Speed is derived by dividing that figure, that's 6818, by the number of milliseconds in the script here. The counter variable acts as a timer, so once the uh, timer runs off uh, and stops, we'll take that those two numbers and derive our speed. The variables trip1 and trip2 are variables that are set to zero. And when either sensor 1 or sensor 2 is tripped, either trip 1 or trip 2 will then be set to equal 1. So they're going to either equal 0 or 1. And later in the sketch, it evaluates the sum of trip 1 and trip 2. And once the sum is equal to 2, then the sketch stops and it calculates the scale speed. The results are then sent to the LCD display. After a brief delay, the system will reset and be ready for use again. If one, uh, but not both, of the sensors is tripped, the sketch will time out after 20 seconds and reset. And then there are some libraries we need to include with this sketch. Uh, the wire library and the liquid crystal underscore, I think that's an I2CH library. And then we uh, initialize, I think it's initializing the uh, liquid crystal display with this command here. And uh, make sure you're using the right parameters. Mine happens to be a 
uh, 20 by 4 liquid crystal display. And next we're going to uh, declare some variables. All these are integers except for the last two. Pin 1 equal to A0. And uh, set our sensor pins here again. Pin 2 is equal to A1. Those are the sensor pins, the output pins from our little sensors. LED 1 and LED 2 are going to be set to digital pins 2 and 3. We're going to declare our two trip variables. Trip 1 and trip 2 will be uh, set to zero to begin with. Our cursor, or excuse me, our counter is uh, also set to zero. Scale speed is a float, uh, which will give us decimals. So scale speed and then kilom, we configure for kilometers per hour. That's also a decimal figure. Okay, and then we're gonna look at the, uh, the setup. Uh, we start with uh, initializing the LCD, the liquid crystal display. So we do an LCD.init, and we do an LCD.backlight, and set the baud rate for your serial monitor to 9600. And we're going to declare some pin modes here, LED1 and LED2 as both output. And then for the uh, LCD display, we're going to set the cursor at 00, zero meaning up at the upper left corner. And we're going to write ready, send LCD print to ready the LCD display. And then in the loop, we're going to declare some uh, variables here, both integers, value of A0 and value of A1. We'll do an analog read for pin 1 and pin 2. Those are the sensor pins coming off our little uh, infrared sensors. I've commented out the uh, serial monitor line there you can use that later if you'd like then we got two uh, if statements if the value of a zero is less than 500 then we're going to turn on the uh, led one and we're going to set trip one to equal one now these sensors typically return a value of less than 500 but you might want to uh, do some experimenting with that make sure this works for you but the sensors i used if I get a value of less than 500, that means it has been tripped. So we uh, set LED 1 to high, and we set trip 1 to equal 1. And then we do the same thing for uh, value of A1. This would be the pin, analog pin 1. If that's less than 500, again, we turn on the LED 2, and we set trip 2 to equal 1. And then from there, we go into a, a switch statement, and we're interrogating the value, or rather, the, yeah, the value of uh, the sum, rather, of trip one and trip two. So if they equal one, these are the two trip variables. If they equal one, that means only one of them has been set. So we're gonna start the counter, and we do a, a LCD clear. We clear the uh, liquid crystal display. We set the cursor to zero, 00 and I'm just going to print the counter and as long as uh, we keep coming back and checking that statement if the sum still equaled one then all we're going to do is increase the counter by one. If however it uh, trip one plus trip two equals two then that means both of the sensors have been tripped. We're going to stop counting and here you see the scale speed is calculated at 6818 divided by the counter, which is the number of milliseconds that have been going by. Kilometers per hour, we take the scale speed and multiply by 1.609 to get kilometers per hour. And I've got a few commented out statements there for the serial monitor. If you want to use those in your script, you can. So we're going to clear the liquid crystal display. We're going to set the cursor to 00. zero. And we're going to print, LCD print, scale speed, and LCD cursor move it down one line. We're still on the first space on the second line. And we're going to write the value of scale speed, LCD print, scale speed. And then follow that with LCD print, uh, MPH in quotes, with a little space there. And we do the same thing. We move down one more line. Now we're on first space the 
third line is remember these start at zero so we go zero one two three and we're going to write Kalam, the value of Kalam, and follow that with a KPH in quotes there. And we're going to delay for five seconds, and then we're going to reset the speedometer. And then finally, uh, tail end of the code here, uh, this is our little timeout we wrote. If the counter gets up to 20 seconds, then we're going to uh, clear the uh, LCD display. We're going to set the cursor to 00, zero. I'm going to print it timed out, and we're going to reset the speedometer. And here's our little reset uh, procedure. All it does is it sets all the variables back to 0, it clears the display, and uh, writes ready at the bottom, and it turns off the uh, both the LEDs, LED1 and LED2. And that's pretty much it for the code. Not much to it, and it's fairly simple. At least I think it is, anyway. It works. It works. It works. Okay, well, now I've figured things out here, but I got one problem. How do I get these little guys up underneath the board, underneath the track? They're pretty big. Plus, those uh, little LEDs are bright and they shine up through the hole. I tried this once before. How do we do that? Also, you got to be able to get at the little adjustment screw on there to adjust the sensitivity. So, and then you're going to need a humongous hole in your layout for that. That's pretty big to try to get up underneath the track. And then, then I had an idea. Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh. Okay, now these little things are fun to use. They're very handy. However, trying to get something like this up underneath the board of your layout and to get these up underneath the track so that they can detect the passage of a train, that's quite a challenge. First of all, it's pretty big. You're going to need a big hole, about three-quarter inch or better, to get this up underneath the track. Also, um, on some of these, these little LEDs are very bright, and I tried this once before, uh, putting one of these up underneath the track, and these little LEDs burn so bright that they shine right up through the hole, uh, and that's not so good, especially at night. You can see it. It looks like a little campfire underneath these uh, these uh, yeah, these little components here. Also, you need to be able to get to this little adjustment screw here. Now, there, not really a screw. It's a potentiometer that will adjust the sensitivity of the, uh, the infrared sensors here. So I came up with an idea that I could modify these, and I'll show you what I did. Now it took a little experimenting. This is the LED, the infrared LED, that uh, I guess you'd call that a transmitter. And this is the receiver. Also, the polarity here, this is positive on the outside. Positive is on the outside and negative is on the middle or the inside. So I was able to remove these components from the board and use something a little smaller. These are, I think, 9 millimeter in diameter, and you can get them in 3 millimeter diameter. So here's 3 millimeter diameter, and you can see they're quite a bit smaller. And they're just like LEDs. They've got the long lead is the positive and the short lead is negative. So that's how they are arranged on this board. See that? The positive lead is on the outside and the negative lead is in the middle. Now, when you put these, when I use these, the first time I tried these, they got to be so close together. Uh, this one needed a little shielding because it uh, they almost need to be a little, a little farther apart in order to work, but that kind of defeated the purpose of trying to make this whole thing a little smaller. So my first idea was to paint this one, paint it a little black and leave the tip unpainted. But then as you can see, it's a little hard to tell one from the other. 
So my next trick was to use a little shrink tubing and I put some shrink tubing uh, just a short piece of shrink tubing over the top and a little bigger piece of shrink tubing around the base to kind of shield the uh, LED from the receiver and then I was able to take some ribbon wire now I use this for a different application but it's the same idea take some ribbon wire and if you look close on this and if I can get a little close up on there you can see the the shrink tubing I've got on this one a little bit of piece of shrink tubing on that and it kind of covers the base so this one is the LED the infrared LED and this one is the receiver and I've soldered them together and kind of packaged them all into some shrink tubing and the ribbon cable and then comes down and if you do it carefully and uh, don't lose track of what you're doing this is positive. Oops, try to back out here a little bit. Sorry. This is positive and negative, negative, positive. And I've used uh, these little plugs here, and I can, after I've modified the board, removed the original components on there, you can plug this right in and you've got an extension on this board. Now this could easily be pushed up underneath your yeah, track. This is much smaller to fit up through underneath your track. So this is a, a good alternative to trying to fit this thing up underneath your track. And you don't need quite as big a hole. You still have a pretty good size hole for these things, but it's a lot better and a lot easier than trying to get this whole thing up through the, underneath the layout. Plus. This is an accessible for adjustments and the little LEDs won't shine so bright that they shine right up through the hole of your uh, layout. Okay, well, I got everything figured out except where am I gonna put this thing? Do I wanna put it on the main line somewhere or a, a branch line? Do I want more holes in my layout? What am I gonna do? Let's see. Oh, and then another idea. Huh, what do you know? Oh, oh, well, um, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I got an idea, I got another idea. Yeah, let's make a little portable device and you can put it anywhere, yeah. Okay, here we have the finished version of the speedometer. Oh boy, oh boy. And this is what it looks like once I get it off the, uh, breadboard and onto a workable little platform that I can use on the uh, on the layout and you see I've got the sensors over here uh, I've got the screen in the middle I've got the nano board is mounted on a, uh, a shield here I guess you could call it a shield where I can screw in all the terminals and I've got the two uh, LEDs down here that are attached to the uh, foam core platform here. That's all this is, is just, uh, I just use some foam core. That's all it is. I'm kind of quick and dirty when it comes to stuff like this. It's foam core. This is kind of nice stuff here because it's got styrene on both ends, not paper. This has got styrene, real thin sheet styrene on each end. So it's uh, real sturdy and it uh, lends itself well for construction of little things like this. So here we have, I'll start with the uh, Arduino board over here. And uh, this little shield here, little screw-in terminal made it real easy to uh, make all my connections. And I used a lot of these little breakaway um, pieces here. I can get these just about anywhere. You know, all these little breakaway things I used for making connections here. And you'll see them in a minute here. These are uh, bent at a 90 degree, otherwise I've got the others here that are just flat. And I use those here for all my connections. I've got a couple of pairs here and there. This one is uh, connecting into the uh, the 5 volt power and the ground. Uh, these two are for the um, coming off the liquid uh, crystal display. This is going into a4 and A5 for the, I think it's the S, 
FDA and the SCL. I'll have to double check my notes on that, which one goes where. I did have these reversed and uh, when I tried it, it didn't work. So um, all I had to do was turn them around, flip the thing around and it works fine. Uh, these two are on pins uh, A0 and a1 these are for the sensors you see the green wire green wire and yellow wire coming out they come out they go under the board and they come out over here and on this end you can see i've got the two sensors uh, there is a common uh, ground wire coming in here this bundle of wires there's four wires there's a black a red and a green and a yellow the black wire is the ground that's coming into the center here and it does one more little loop over here to the other one so it's a common ground for both of these there's a red wire the positive wire coming off the five volts of the uh, arduino board that also comes around to a common here and another little hop over here so the red and black are giving power off the five volt in the ground from the arduino the yellow wire is going back over to uh, A1 over here and likewise the green wire from the other sensor is going over here to uh, A0 I think that's yeah the yellow is going to A1 the green is going to A0 anyway you get the idea make my connections here so I've got over here we've got A0 A1 A4 A5 the 5 volt power and the ground I notice here I've got two uh, wires going into the 5 volt here one is for the sensors over here and the other one is providing power to the uh, LCD likewise I've got two um, ground wires here again one is going to the LCD ground and the other one is going over here to the uh, common ground for the uh, sensors over here on the other side of the board made it easy to make a connection there's a ground over here on this side so I just use this ground and pin uh, 2 and pin 3 are going over to the LCDs right here or not LCDs, LEDs, I'm getting my L's mixed up. LEDs are powered off of here and you can see I've got a common ground coming off of here. Get that wire out of the way. A little common ground comes off of here and a little hoop to there and connecting the LEDs. Now you may have noticed I've got a lot of, uh, made a lot of little plugs here. I designed it this way so that if any of these components fail, uh, it's easy enough to just unplug it and re I could replace the component if I need to uh, plug this in back in again here. So making uh, these little cables was uh, made pretty easy by having a lot of these little pieces that I bought. And again, I've got a bunch of these on, on, uh, on hand here. I don't think you can see these. Get my board out of the way so you can see them. These are just simple little breakaway pieces again that I used to make my cables uh, I used them uh, here I used them here and here uh, I used a little um, two lead cables on the other end here you can see the cables coming off the sensors I used just some of these and all I did was just solder some real fine wire onto them and used a little shrink tube to help uh, insulate the connections so again, on the other side of the board here, we've got the two sensors here, and they go down underneath. One of them heads off over here, and one heads off over here. Turn this around, a little easier to see it. And here are the infrared uh, transmitter and receiver down here on one side, and on the other side over here, and these are seven and a half inches apart which would be equal to 100 scale feet in the end scale now if you're doing a, a different scale um, i suppose you could have to make these uh, further apart if you're doing ho or o scale they're going to get pretty big so you may want to 
choose something that's uh, maybe 50 scale feet apart or even 25 scale feet apart for the larger scales. Um, and then, of course, you'd have to uh, uh, alter the math inside the code a little bit as well to compensate for that. So, and a few more things to say about the uh, setup here. I used some rather sturdy pieces of uh, plastic truck that I had lying around. Uh, these are quarter inch square pieces and they uh, nice and sturdy for making pretty much what looks like a little bench to put all the components on there. And I used a little hot glue to uh, attach just not the uh, LEDs themselves but the little plug there. Also you can notice I've got two uh, the two uh, 220 ohm resistors right there. You can see them underneath that green wire. And again, I used hot glue <clears throat> underneath here for gluing this little, these little pieces underneath. And the sensors are what picks up the train as it goes by. And it uh, doesn't look pretty, but it works. As mentioned, uh, I used these little breakaway header pins in a number of places to make these connections and just show you how easy this is to make these. You solder those leads on there and use a little shrink tubing and makes for some real handy connections here. They don't quite fit in here if you get more than say uh, two or three of them in a row. Um, they don't quite match but two in a row match pretty well. So these make very easy connections and tighten these down and they work very well and here's a little trick I learned about how to remove these little pieces from the board take a pair of needle nose pliers with uh, rubber bands around the handles and heat both leads and the weight of the pliers helps to Pull them right off the board once they're hot. Do that with the other one. And heat up both leads and off they come. Whoopee. And then using a couple of these little uh, breakaway headers, snap off two here and another two. And can solder those right into your board where the other pieces used to be. And make some handy little plugs. And once you've got these uh, little plugs soldered in place, you want to take another uh, cord here, a little cable that's already made, plug that on there, try it out, test it, make sure it works. And plug it in here, plug it in a battery, and voila, it works. See the little trip light going off? Okay. Next, we're going to take some little uh, leads here and attach these. We're going to make new cables. We had to make the cables a little different for the speedometer. So we're using a red wire and a black wire. These will be for the uh, the uh, LED, infrared LED emitter. Now for the receiver we're using a blue wire and a yellow wire. Black and blue are kind of negative and yellow and red are positive going to add some shrink tubing around there and we're going to make uh, some plugs on the other end get our shrink tubing on and I'm going to use a little bigger piece of uh, shrink tube just to kind of gather together the cable here at the end, get a little more organized, a little more stability at the end of the cable. And use one more piece of shrink tube in the middle just to gather together all those little wires.
And we'll do the same on the other end. We'll put on a little shrink tube, get the wires stripped for soldering. And here's our other end of the cable, some little plugs that will be going onto the uh, our little sensor board. And we're going to take the red and black wire and attach that to one of the plugs. And then we'll take the yellow and the blue wire and attach that to the other plug. And then we'll get our shrink tube shrunk. And here I'm applying the shrink tube to the LED, the infrared LED. So a little tiny piece over the top like so, and then a bigger piece, a little bigger piece to help cover the base. Well, the next thing I like to do is take a sharpie and I'm going to mark the negative pole with a black sharpie. If I had a red one I'd mark the positive but I'll use black for the negative on both the uh, LED and the receiver, infrared LED and receiver. So now they're both marked and I did that because I'm going to clip these a little short and once I've clipped them I can no longer tell which one was positive or negative without having marked them. So little clip and now remember the uh, negative pole is on the middle and the positive pole is to the outside so I want to make sure I bend these a little bit they're going to bend them a little bit so they fit better in the uh, sockets that I use for the speedometer the others I left straight but these I'm going to bend and once they're ready to go I'll just plug them right into the little socket I made and there we go that's a sample of one of the cables that I made for the speedometer now we're going to test it put it on a uh, modified board here plug things in and give it a try make sure it works plug in our little breadboard and plug in our power making sure we have positive and negative in the right way and it works, I think. Yep, see the little LED flash as I test it here? A little hard to see. There we go. And you can even see the LED light on there. You can't see it under normal light, but on a camera, it shows up. Pretty cool. Uh, I think we're ready to take it upstairs to the layout and give it a try. See what happens. Okay, well, in review, uh, there's a few little things I still need to figure out. Uh, you may have noticed when I ran the uh, test on the layout, I picked this up right away to, in order to read the uh, display. Um, if you let the train continue to run under this thing, you're going to get a display for about five seconds, and then you're going to get some erroneous readings because the sensors will, will uh, be set off simultaneously with the train as it continues to pass underneath so uh, you got five seconds to read the thing before it resets and you might want to adjust the delay 
in the code. Give yourself maybe 30 seconds to read it. Uh, maybe even 30 seconds for the train to pass underneath it completely. Um, otherwise, you've got five seconds to read it and then it's gonna try to uh, read the next train that comes by. And if there's a long train passing under this, you're gonna get some uh, funky numbers because both the sensors will trigger simultaneously and you're gonna get some false information. So that might be one thing to change on here. Also, um, remember that little potentiometer underneath the board here that adjusts the brightness. Uh, you might wanna put a hole in here to, to uh, have access to that so you can turn that. So that's one little oops I need to come back and fix, uh, excuse me, get a little hole under here so that you can put a screwdriver under there and adjust that potentiometer for the brightness of the liquid crystal display. Um, also, uh, when I made these little guys, you notice I bent them, bent the, uh, the LED and the receiver. You can see here how I put them in there. And it's similar to what I did with the LEDs up here. And I did that so I could kind of pull them out and replace them if ever I needed to replace these little guys. It makes them easy to pull them out. However, on the underside of the board, another oops, I don't have enough room here to pull this out until it bumps into this leg here. So I can't really pull these out unless I take this off this little uh, cross member here. So that's another little oops. So you might want to uh, provide yourself enough space to pull these out and if they ever need to be replaced. So, but uh, that's why I bent these little things to, uh, so I could glue this little socket onto the, to this uh, cross member here and then aim these straight out at the track. So they're both bent at 90 degrees like that so they can pick up the train as it goes by. Another thing I wanted to mention was how I made this little plug into the power here. You can see I'll pull it out here. I loosen the screws and pull it out. And I made this by taking a uh, little header pin and I removed the two pins between here and left these so that they would fit into the uh, 5 volt and the ground plug here on the Arduino board. So a little trickery there to make that work. So I'll tighten these back down and we're all set to go. And the other little problem with this is that I've got to have a cord plugged into the Arduino and I'd like to figure out a way that I can perhaps make a, a battery pack of some kind that might fit underneath under here. It could fit some batteries of some sort in there and have that run the board rather than having a cord uh, tripping off the end of the Arduino here. So that's another thing I want to try to figure out. See if I can make a little power cord that would uh, connect to a battery pack instead of having the cord uh, traipsing around on the layout. Well, uh, I think that's going to do it. This video has gotten to be a bit lengthy. I hope I've answered all your questions on here. There are different sensors you could use for uh, your uh, for your speedometer. Um, you could use photoresistors, and those would be easy to put up underneath the track. They're real small; they're about the size of an LED. So, uh, photoresistors would work. But again, you'll have to modify the code a little bit and your setup if you're going to use photoresistors. Uh, I'll put links to the uh, components I used and some of the. Uh, uh, some other helpful links that might help. There's a, uh, a site that has some tutorials on how to use the liquid crystal display. So I'll include a link for that and all the components I used on here. So thanks so much for uh, coming along. Uh, my voice has gotten a little raspy. Uh, of course, I've come down with COVID. So uh, pardon me for sounding a little froggy. Um, so I'm going to take it easy for a while, but I uh, managed to get the video pretty well done I hope and I'll send this out shortly so um, best wishes to everyone stay healthy <laughs> taking it from the guy who's got COVID and uh, we shall see you next time I hope this was helpful I know there's probably other ways to do this project but uh, this was the way that I figured out that worked for me so hope this was useful and helpful to you and uh, Hope you all have a, a, a good month until we meet again on the uh, Minneapolis Northwestern N-Scale 
Model Railroad monthly video. Well, take it easy, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Yeah.